Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Oni Podcast. Today, we're talking about mental health, which is obviously very important, but also what to look out for if you think you might need some help and what you can do to help yourself in the long term. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, Harris Butt. How's it going? He's a very good personal trainer, tutors at the NZIHF, Institute of Health and Fitness, and we've also worked together in improving his own movement mechanics. He's a junior 93 class class powerlifting national champion or was or was yeah, yeah what up harris well, how's it going good good a little bit stressed about this word that we're trying to learn yeah so me, every me week on this podcast why teaches us a new word to use last week was ho water for health or wellness today was is kori tinana kori tinana kori tinana hey, you got hey, it hey. and that means workout Mm-hmm. I kori tinana. <laughs> I sometimes kori tinana. <laughs> you need to up your kori tinana. I should do more kori tinanas hey. for my whole water. Oh. Hey. Mm. For, those, for those that don't yes. know, what is whole water? Whole water is health or wellness. Okay. Right? Mm. Wellness. Whole water. And learning um, PT or, or health um, professional stuff, we learn it in. The pillars of four, the four pillars of her order, that sort of thing. But anyway, so today we're talking about mental health. Why mental health, Harris? Mental health is something that's been growing. The conversation has been increasing over the past few years, but it's mm. still something that uh, a lot of people don't know how to improve on, you know, mm. uh, through exercise or even without exercise. Yeah. So it's important to figure out ways to help others things that they can do um, practically on, mm. on a day-to-day basis. To that's a massive health. thing, right? Because we've had uh, Mental Health Awareness Week recently. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And the awareness have gone up and we've been able to recognize that it is something that's super important for mm. us to be able to see and recognize in our entire wellness. It's not just physical health, it's also mental health too. Exactly. Right? So it's really important for us to be able to actually improve it long term. Um, can you tell me about, or tell us all about a little bit about your personal story? What's some journeys that you've been through? Get some insight into who you are. Yeah, so you know, when I started personal training, I was uh, fortunate enough to become very successful very quickly. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, I was getting into powerlifting and again, getting very successful very quickly in it. Uh, but one thing mm. I neglected through that whole journey was you know improving my mental health because mm. I was doing well I didn't need to work on that side of things yeah because you're freaking strong man like we work together you're <laughs> freaking strong yeah yeah so mm. I can get pretty strong pretty quickly which is which I'm pretty blessed to have mm. um, now when I started struggling with let's say my business personal life uh, injuries through training uh, my mental health uh, declined and through that I um, you know, my business suffered. I couldn't uh, maintain working properly through Les Mills. I uh, couldn't train properly. Over yeah. time, I found ways to get better, talking to people, figuring out ways on my own to improve my mental health. Uh, and just going through that journey, I kind of yeah. realized, you know, a lot of people actually don't know how to get better. What was it about um, your mental health that stopped you from doing all those things? Was it like stress? Was it like yeah, I think um, it was like an, yeah, what, what yeah, was it was it? accumulation of a lot of different things, stress. Um, having ex- having expectations um, as a business owner um, mm. as well as an athlete, as an athlete too, uh, yeah. yeah exactly yeah. Um, and then you know stuff like being too hard on yourself and not understanding the process of things mm. how you know how your mind and your, how your body really works mm. um, where you know when you have like bad feelings um, where do they actually come from and, and what does that all mean mm. and when you just take it all on on yourself what does it all mean yeah right. um, <laughs> deep questions so this weekend, you're actually taking a workshop, or you're running a workshop yeah. to do with mental health. Yeah. What is that all about? So I'm taking a workshop this weekend uh, to help with people uh, with training and exercise as well as mental health, mm-hmm. either together or um, separately. Yeah. Because they're linked, right? They're super linked. Physical oh, this, activity yeah. and mental health. Absolutely, yeah. super linked. And we, we all know that you know training or exercise helps mm-hmm. improve your mental health. But it, even even if you exercise, it doesn't make you immune to mental health issues, mm. as, as everyone knows. So we're looking at things that we can do, strategies that we can implement uh, on a day-to-day basis, some super simple, some 
super easy. Yeah. Um, some things that might be a little bit uncomfortable, but you know, we, we might need to do those uncomfortable things mm. to make meaningful change over time. Mm. Well, I think that's really important, man. We need to learn these tools and strategies to improve our mental health. We've got the awareness now. We've yeah. been, in recent years, we've been starting to get more and more into health and, oh, we have not been saying hoa at all, have we? There's like six dollars each. <laughs> 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 no, okay. I just noticed that I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> so you didn't write it down. <laughs> I forgot to mention that um, if we don't use these words in our conversation, it's a dollar donation okay. to Why Marty is Food. Why Marty is Food. Okay. <laughs> I should probably stop eating, so it's probably a dollar donation towards healthy food. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. Okay, so, I can do that. Six dollars each plus Ben's three dollars from last Oh week. yeah. I think I got a couple dollars too. Just How much is that? Moment. That's ten dollars for me. Yeah. What's your account number? <laughs> but, mm. but anyway, I think it's really important for us to uh, learn some tools and strategies to be able to improve our whole order overall. Mm. That includes our mental health obviously. So I think it's really awesome that you're putting on this workshop. Um, we already know physical activities linked with mental health and developing some Recognition and strategies to deal with that all is super awesome. So that's freaking awesome that you're doing that. And the proceeds go to charity as well. Like yeah, everything goes to charity. Awesome. Where is that? So the, uh, the workshop? The workshop is at the New Zealand Institute of Health and Fitness in Wellington. So that is uh, level 194 Dixon Street. Mm. That's, what time is that? That's at 10 a.m. this Saturday. This which, Saturday. Which is the 17th of awesome. November. How do, how do people sign up to that? I've got a website uh, all put up. It's on my Instagram. You can get out a link. Uh, my, my, my plug is Harris Fitness Coach. All mm -hmm. one word. One R awesome. in Harris. No, cool. We'll probably link some stuff onto our video as well. But anyway, so I think it's really important that even while we're talking about these tools and strategies to gain more insight and background into mental health and how to improve it, I think it's also important that we need to recognize some boundaries. Mm. So we're both personal trainers or working as um, in, in health professions and being able to recognize our scope of practice is super important because yep. we are not counselors or psychologists mm -hmm. so as soon as something becomes like a clinical presentation of um of anything then it's kind of out of our scope yeah. and we should refer on so i think we should talk about what are some signs or symptoms or things that people should recognize both as pts or as people just noticing things about themselves Right, so let's talk about PTs first. There's an evolving industry, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And we are often dealing with people that want to work on their self-esteem or aren't that confident with themselves. So there's some of these areas that borderline into some mental health issues, things like depression and anxiety. Yeah. And if we can't recognize some of these things, then we could be doing harm. Yeah, right? definitely. We could potentially be doing a lot of harm for these people, especially if we're, I don't know, just bad PTs in general. Um, so as PTs, what should we be looking out for in our clients? I guess you can look out for how someone sort of acts. Um, mm. There's some indicators. It's like if you have gone through something, you know, you've suffered a trauma and you can't seem to stop thinking about it. Yeah. That is a sign that, you know, you might need to go speak to someone, a professional. Um, mm. There's a few other things. I've written and a down. trauma can be anything. Like oh, yeah, it. yeah. It could yeah. be... Anything that has a massive impact on you emotionally, mm. yeah. psychologically. Um, and it, again, you can't stop thinking about it. Um, you know, stuff like having unexpected or recurring headaches, stomach aches, and just feeling run down in general. Mm. Um, for Because when we're emotionally upset, it can affect yeah. our bodies, which we'll learn about soon. Right? Absolutely. You're going to talk to us a little bit about how that yep. works. But. Um, and then stuff like using uh, substances to cope. Mm. You know? That's a big one. Yeah. Um, what can these substances be? Like drugs, obviously. Yeah, drugs, alcohol. Alcohol. Um, no, food. Even. Food can be a substance. Yeah, hey. absolutely. Um, it's a coping mechanism. Mm. Um, you can so use anything as a coping mechanism, and a lot of them can be unhealthy behaviors. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, stuff like how your if you usually enjoy these hobbies and things on a day to day basis, and you stop enjoying things you usually would enjoy, mm. um, there can be signs that something is up. So stuff mm. like, you know, if you go out fishing or if you like playing video games or going to the gym, playing uh, with your friends and you just stop enjoying those things, then um, that could be a sign that it's something could be mm. up and you should probably talk. Um, so you could feel like you're disconnected from like previous people. hobbies yeah. and people as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
relationships can be strained. Mm -hmm. So as a PT, obviously it's kind of like hairdressing in a way. You have clients that kind of like talk to you about issues that they might not normally talk to with their normal circle of friends. There's something about um, the relationship they have a client that they can sort of just tell you anything. Yeah, yeah. So they often tell you a lot of things. And, and as PTs, if we can listen out and hear some of these indicators, it can give us clues into where their mental health is, right? Like obviously, if it breaches into some of this stuff, we can't help them directly. Mm. We might have to refer on. Yeah. Who would we refer on to if, let's say, a client has suffered a trauma or there's, there's, um, they, they, they're maybe behaving nihilistically, they're mm -hmm. not, um, they're, their attitude towards their, their, uh, Kori Tinana is not very good. Um, they're telling you about strained relationships or things that they used to enjoy. Who would you refer them to? I guess the first thing is uh, your community counselors, the people that are around your community closest to yeah. you, uh, doctors, GPs. Uh, obviously, there's free health lines mm. uh, on the internet. And they're free. Medical, yeah, they're free. Yeah. Um, so those they're are helpful. extremely helpful and uh, point of contact because you can just call them up at any time, anywhere, right? Mm. Um, and so talking to somebody you trust, obviously. If you don't feel comfortable talking to um, or going out to a professional, at least having a conversation mm. with someone that you trust is... At least having some sort of support network, right? Mm, anybody, absolutely. right? Yeah. Um, I think that's really important, you know, like family, friends. Um, it's a bit of responsibility yeah. for them to take, but, mm -hmm. I mean, if you need the help, then... Yeah. And you know, same. Uh, if you can be that person for someone, mm. you can be that designated listener <laughs> that mm. someone needs. Uh, that can be very important. And knowing that there is someone out there in your life that you can have that conversation with is yeah, really helpful. Yeah, sure. So as PTs, we're watching out for those things. As an individual, obviously, the same things apply. But <clears throat> got another one on this list. It's like um, if you are kind of like consistently being asked, like, "Are you okay? Do you need help?" Are you talking to anybody about this? That's probably a sign that you should probably talk about it with somebody, mm -hmm. right? So that's another thing. Yeah. If you are feeling like you're overwhelmed by by a past trauma or something that's um, you, you can't stop thinking about or can't break out of, then you just need to talk. Um, so anyway, we're going to talk about um, understanding some of the things behind this. Mm -hmm. Nothing in too specific detail because obviously it's out of our scope, but there are some very helpful, easy, simple tips and tricks and tools and strategies you can apply to understanding and managing all of this stuff, right? So let's talk about emotions. That's the really common one uh, that we keep talking about, mental health, emotions. Yeah, so emotions are a big part of everyone's life. And understanding where they come from can be very useful to help you control or at least know what to do when they arise mm. right? so what are what are the emotions when we, when we think about emotions when we think of uh, what the things we feel mm. when is anger one of them anger is definitely one of them you know anger sadness um, fear mm. uh, so a lot of the emotions that we feel especially the ones that are quite strong like fear like anxiety mm. um, or anger they they're they're really there from you know the caveman time, you know when we were back in underwear, twenty four seven. Back when loincloths were a thing, right? Um, still you know, is a thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> we we we'd, we'd there'd be like a lot of threats to our survival, mm. you know, like animals trying to eat us, not having food. So those emotions would give mm. us signs and signals to you know protect ourselves. Right. Yeah. Now, we've evolved as people and as a society, but those instinctual emotions are still there, right? Mm. So they're there. Because they're quite well embedded, right? We're yeah, they're very well embedded. through survival. Yeah. We've, and if we yeah. didn't survive, we didn't pass on our genes, it, obviously. Exactly, yeah. So we've survived, but our emotions think we're still in that primal state. Mm. So they're there to give us signs and signals to tell us we're in danger. Now, mm. the danger that we were in back then of being, you know, eaten or, or, mm, or like dying, killed, or dying, you're killed yeah. exactly, which is quite extreme. We don't have those dangers anymore. Mm. But our emotions, our brain, back of our head, that's mm. still things we do. But our responses are still to that level. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Right? So, so if we can understand that, we can, we can use that and be like, okay, these are strong feelings and emotions. Mm but they're from a time where 
we would be in a massive amount of danger. Mm. But because we're not, I can actually control this. I, mm. can, I can stand and I can control this. I cannot let this control me. Mm. So that's that's a first step in understanding, you know, the, yeah. where they're actually coming from. Because that's, uh, I think that's a common thing. Um, when I am super, I don't know, emotional, I catastrophize everything. Right. It just blows everything into right? proportion. Catastrophize. Yeah, that's it turns right. into a, it turns everything turns into a catastrophe. catastrophe. Yeah. 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 I'm super anxious. Something's happened. It's the end of the world. That yeah, sort of yeah. feeling. Yeah. Things right? are blown up. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. It's only you don't you don't realize that then until you're out of the situation, mm. right? Until maybe yeah. a week later, or when you're not feeling that thing. Mm. But when you're in that state, it does feel like it's a massive, massive deal. Mm. So understanding that we need to go. Okay, so emotions <coughs> are good and emotions mm. are bad, and we should learn to go. We shouldn't trust either a good or a bad emotion. What do you mean by that? So what I mean is, if uh, let's say emotion is bad and we're feeling anxious about something, yeah, um, you know, and anxiety usually comes from some f- previous experience in the past or something you are going to do in the future, right? Mm. And if you have a bad experience in the past and you have anxiety about how someone's going to react or what mm. is going to unfold, you might make decisions based on that feeling that will have an even worse impact on you mm. because of the way you're feeling. Yeah, it makes and, sense. Right? And if you have like, a good emotion, really feeling good about yourself, you're having a great day, and because you are, you see this massive sale of shoes in the store, <laughs> and you go spend lots of money because you're feeling great, mm. and then you check your bank account the next day, you're like, oh, I should not have done that. <laughs> right? So right. those emotions can have an impact if we let them. Right, okay. So we should, we should acknowledge that they're there and become familiar with them, but not always rely on them to make the decisions mm. you need to make. Now live your life by the by things you feel. Solely your emotions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Right, okay. What about the brain? The brain. What should we understand about the brain? So the brain is, is, is a pretty cool place. A lot of things happen there. Mm. And the two main things... I have it there. Yes, <laughs> you do have it there. Um, there's two parts of the brain that um, really affect our emotions. So we've got the limbic system, which is associated mm. with uh, thinking, well, not thinking, sorry, feeling, um, and emotions. Mm. And there's another part of our brain, which is called the neocortex, which is associated with thinking, being conscious, and making complex decisions. Wow. And language, right? It's quite different, right? It's very different. Now, one important thing to note is the limbic brain isn't associated with language. Mm. So our feelings and emotions, the things we feel, we can't, it's very difficult to, for us to, like, say what we feel. Right, right, because that part of our brain isn't associated with it. Mm. So the way the brain waves work is signals go through the limbic system, mm. and we feel the things first before we can articulate what we feel. Right, because it has to go through the limbic system before it gets to the neocortex, the thinking brain. So this can explain physiologically why sometimes when we're overwhelmed with emotions and feelings, it's very hard for us already to even talk about them. Exactly, or form words yeah. about them. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Like a super simple example in a, you know, in a way is when you're, when you start dating someone, right? Mm. And someone asks you, oh, so why do you why do you into this person? Why do you like this person? And you go, I don't even know. yeah, I, I just don't know. Uh, uh, you know, they, they're really making I me just laugh. love her. Yeah, I love her. And then you know, I just they just make me laugh. Wait, so no one else has made you laugh before? Yeah, I see. You know I what see. I mean? I see. It's very hard to articulate, but they're still there. So all this stuff is well embedded in science, right? Mm. Mm. How did you get into all of this stuff? As a personal trainer, you, you've obviously helped a lot of people with their own her journey. Yeah. But how did you get into all this mental health stuff anyway? Because this is not just like basic PT stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. So I think the, the first thing was just a desire to understand how we think, you know? Mm. Um, I have a lot of conversations with clients, uh, students other uh, other friends and and I get very interested in what happens in the brain to create the thought processes for mm. them to communicate the things that they're communicating to me uh, and I looked into a few things I read a couple books and I started you know diving deep into how the way we think influences the way we act mm. and speak to others yeah um, favor on listening slash watching Harris is actually being very modest right now because we're talking before and he's actually helped well over 200 people, many of which have had 
something or rather to do with their mental health, right? Mm. Um, this is not like normal PT stuff, although it's really good to know you've actually helped a lot of people with their mental health while recognizing scope of practice as yeah, well. Yeah, so yeah. They can be very humble. Mm. Yeah, so I think, yeah, that the way that people think, the way they act, because mm. of the way they think, yeah, it's super interesting to me. And I really have, interesting. Yeah, and I and I was like, what is the root of this? And it's mm. the brain, right? So we're just talking about sort of understanding our emotions, where they come from, mm. the whole survival and evolutionary aspect of that, um, understanding parts of our brain. What do we do with all that stuff? What do we? What can we do with it? So some of the things that we can do is to look at how we can. A, sim- a simple way is the feelings that we feel like the shitty feelings right terrible feelings that we have and how we can learn to understand and control them right mm. there's this four steps um but before i talk about the four steps here's something that you know most people go through it's called the the, the feedback loop from hell right the feedback loop loop from hell the feedback loop from hell whoa right? <laughs> okay so when you you'll feel anxious about something insignificant mm. then you feel more anxious because you realize you're anxious about something insignificant yes and then you get more anxious because you realize you're still anxious about mm. this insignificant all thing the time. all the time right mm. and then you get pissed off with yourself because you're like why why can't i stop why can't i stop being anxious and you think about how anxious you are and how pissed off you are makes you more anxious yep okay and it, and it goes in so that's the loop that's a loop anxious anxious angry anxious, anxious. yes oh my god yeah yeah right and everyone goes through it so how do we break it right when we feel something we have to accept it for what it is you know i am anxious about this thing that's okay so because when we accept it what happens is we are removing the energy and time to fight it and the more we fight it the more of a loop it becomes right why am i anxious why am i anxious instead right I'm anxious. Okay, that's a thing right now. Mm. That immediately breaks the loop, right? It's kind of like, don't think about the elephant, right? And you yeah. keep thinking about the you elephant. You keep about the elephant. You just accept that the elephant's there. You sort of just, okay. just yeah, what exactly. Now? Yeah, what okay, now? Cool. Let's move on. So you break the pattern. So you break the pattern by accepting it for what it is. Mm. And the next thing you can do is learn about it and become familiar with it. So, what do you mean by that? So what I mean by that is when you feel those feelings, don't judge yourself for having the, the feelings. Because when you start judging yourself, you attack yourself, right? You, you, you automatically say, you know, you aren't human and you shouldn't have these feelings, mm. even though they're a very normal part of being a human being. Um, they're part of our instinctual self. Mm. So if you judge yourself for having these feelings, it's going to, again, take away, require more energy to battle yourself mm. and struggle with having the yourself, conversation yeah. mm. of why do I have these feelings even though they're just they're just a part of being human, mm. right? So, so first, accept for what it is. Don't judge yourself for having it. And then become familiar w- with it and, and realize, okay, what triggers it usually? Mm. What, what part of what I do on a day-to-day basis mm. or how I interact with other people Triggers. What normally starts this loop. Yeah, what, what right. starts this loop. Okay. And then once you become familiar with it, you can start to manage it. You can realize, okay, so if I have a difficult conversation, um, if I don't uh, have my... What's the word? Kori Tinana. If I, if I don't have my Kori Tinana. Was that accurate? Was that? Okay, cool. Got the thumbs up from Y? Thank you. Um... You know, we start feeling anxious, and then we can go, cool, how can I manage this? Do mm-hmm. I need to plan a little bit better? Do I need to just let it be and keep moving forward? Do I need to talk to someone? So once we understand what triggers it, we can go, okay, how can, right. how can I manage mm. this? Again, without judging it, mm. and accepting that it is here and it's a thing, and it's going to be part of me for right now. So this is like a step-by-step guide into how to handle these kind of bad moments in yeah, life, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a negative feedback loop. Mm-hmm. Break the loop. Break the loop. Recognize the trigger of the loop. Mm-hmm. That gives you some place to go in how you can manage the trigger because you've already recognized it. You, right? you, so you can manage the trigger or if, the tr- or if you can't sort of manage the trigger you can manage how you react how you react to the trigger yeah. right okay 
Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll be a good example. I hate when people lie to me. I hate when people are not genuine with me. Right. And that puts me in a negative loop. Cool. But if I recognize that someone's being ingenuine with me, mm-hmm. I can choose to not make a big fuss and not get angry. Mm-hmm. That sort of thing? Yeah, that sort of thing. That's so like how I react to my trigger. Yeah. So someone makes you, well, uh, isn't honest with you, you can accept it for what it is. Some people just aren't honest. Mm. And then, okay, <clears throat> cool. And then, you know, you might be upset with yourself for being super angry about someone not being honest with you mm. and say, hey, it's okay to be angry about this thing. I, I, if I wasn't angry, that's, that, that would be kind of weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's how to handle bad feelings um, and negative feedback loops. Mm-hmm. Is there, what, what can we do about positive, positivity? Em- embrace it. Embrace it. Eh? And learn to use it to build momentum mm. positively. Yeah. Right? Um, I think that's super important. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. I was at a um, neuroplasticity workshop a few weeks ago um, with Lisa Crawford, and she was talking about um, um, how reinforcing positive patterns can have an impact on not just your mental health, but obviously physically. Yeah, too, yeah, right? 100%. And it's all pattern-based. Like I, what I took from it is that everything's pattern-based. Obviously, I operate in movement and mm-hmm. everything's pattern-based there too, but also in the mind, the circuitry in your mind and your yeah. neurology is yeah. all pattern-based It's too. all pattern-based. If you practice being negative, practice these feedback loops, they get stronger yeah. and bigger, just like muscle tissue, yeah. you know, it just yeah. gets stronger. So if you practice positive feedback loops mm-hmm. or if positive thought in general or being in the moment being mindful and 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 recognizing and being right there with that positivity and embracing it like you were saying yeah. that does really good things for our mental yeah. health right a super simple way to think about this is um one thing is understand that your brain is really lazy lazy mm-hmm. super lazy so what i mean by that is it will do what it is used to doing and whatever comes natural to it Mm. And what comes natural to it is what it's it's accustomed to. So if if, if you think in a certain way, mm. when you're in a stressed situation, you'll go back to thinking in that way because it's just easy to do that. Right. Well, you had a pattern of that. You've practiced yeah. that. You're good at that. Yeah. And and the neural bridges are built based on that. That's what neuroplasticity is. Is you do something and you build a connection mm. in, in your brain. And the more you do it, the bigger the connection is and the stronger the bridge gets. Mm. And eventually that bridge can get so strong, it can be hard to break. Mm. Right? Negative or positive. Yeah. Right? Makes so we, sense. we have to practice building that bridge in a, in a positive way. Mm. Now, how can we... It does we, take practice, eh? Oh, absolutely. It takes practice. Mm. So how can we do this? How can we get better at handling our feelings, positive and negative? So for, for the positive feelings, you, we want to look at the things that either can help us get in a better mood, right? Um, we, we all know moving mm. helps us feel better, right? Um, if we move, we can use that as momentum. Do you mean like body movement? Yeah, body movement. Yeah, yeah body yeah. movement, right? Body movement. body movement. Yeah, exercise is a way that we feel good mm. because it is literally moving. It's expressing mm. ourselves through movement. Yes. But we can't always exercise. No. Right? Uh, so things that we can do is express ourselves through movement like dancing to some songs that we like mm. right and the funny thing is when we're uh, depressed or feeling down on ourselves, the last thing we want to do is move and express mm. ourselves good point we want to just sit there and be in our feelings mm. just mope around just mope around even though even though we know we shouldn't be doing that mm. but it's what's easiest to us within that moment because yeah. that's what our brain is mm. telling us so we need to realize that and say i mm. want to break out of this Therefore, I need to keep start moving. Yeah, I need to break that pattern. Yeah. What else physiologically does movement do? It's something to do with dopamine, right? Oh, yeah, dopamine, mm. right? So when you move, you feel good. You have the dopamine release. Mm. When you have the dopamine release when you move, you, you, you generally... What is, do- what is dopamine? It's a hormone that mm. makes you just fill your body with endorphins right mm. you you it's and we yeah. hear that a lot with um well, we hear that word a lot but what is that even what is it because we always hear oh yeah we exercise or we'll do a koritina move around mm. and then we're going to get an injection of endorphins endorphins right so it's your it's a chemical in your brain telling you this is something that's super cool 
mm. you should feel really good about it. Yes. Right? And it's, it gets triggered by obviously moving around, mm. uh, having a conversation, being around people that you care about, you love, mm. you know? Being engaged. Being engaged. Being interested in something, challenged. It's going to give you all those feelings, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, having that gratification. Mm. That's why Facebook, you know, it gives you, mm. social media gives you that dopamine yeah. from the instant gratification it's when instant people day. hit that like button on whatever mm. you post. What else gives you, like, instant gratification to those endorphins and stuff. Uh, kind of a negative one a negative one if mm. a negative one is someone that you know tells you something uh i'm thinking like drugs and alcohol oh and yeah other things that give you a little hit oh yeah absolutely yeah or like yeah. a bad relationship with food would give you a little bit of a mm -hmm. hit those instant these, hits right? yeah and it links to addiction in that way too because you're practicing that pattern right yeah absolutely so your yeah, drugs alcohol mm -hmm. Um, food, they feel they feel good right there and yeah. then, but obviously they have the negative effects later on. But that's why we want them because we don't have that natural yeah. endorphin feeling through kore mm. tenana uh, or yeah. talking to people. Nice. Thank you. Um, so we we start chasing those things through yeah. substances. I imagine, because I'm no expert, but I imagine this is how you would deal with addiction too, right? You break the loop, you recognize the trigger, you manage the trigger, and you try and do yeah. it without judging yourself yeah there's a really cool book called the power of habit power of habit uh i forgot who it's by but it goes into detail on how uh, these addictions and habits are formed and mm. what you can do to break them mm. but if you really want to learn to break them um there's a a, a book called atomic habit which, atomic habit atomic habit which um some some of the things i'm going to be taking through in my uh, workshop I'm going to be from that book. Mm. And really you're going to cover a lot of this stuff in your workshop in more depth. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, teach people step by step on how to, how to understand your emotions, mm -hmm. brain, and how to control certain things and manage them and some step by, a, a bigger step by step thing than the four steps you've given us today, right? And how, yep. to, how to be better and practice sustainability. Mm -hmm. so speaking of sustainability, what can we do really quickly to create behavior change to try and help our mental health i guess the first thing we want to do is we know the brain likes to feel good right mm. how can we make the brain feel good and still do good things right so self-efficacy is the ability to do small things small behavior things mm. that can make us feel good to build that positive momentum to do the things we need to do throughout our day mm. what do you mean good things so good what things good things as in behaviors that will influence you in a positive way right so mm. being a healthier person doing your kori tenana you know mm. um, having a healthy relationship with it all as well I yeah, yeah exactly um you know being uh, usually in general uh, a tidy person or someone that mm. um you can have nice conversations with mm. um one thing that i use is a simple example is making your bed in the morning right mm. for some people it's difficult to do right but it's not a very difficult thing in itself to do no right so let's say you struggle to be um let's say a tidy person and you want to make mm -hmm. and you want to become tidier right uh and 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 your your mental health struggles mm -hmm. but you want to improve it in a way so you can go okay i'm gonna learn i'm gonna make my bed every day now it's something that is easy enough for you to do in the morning but it's difficult enough for you, for you that it requires a bit of focus mm. and attention every single time in the morning. Um, so you can you can take that. So you let's say you wake up, you you make a bed, mm. you did something, and you accomplished a goal, mm. and you feel good about it. Yeah. Right. Okay. You have that instant win, and and it's important to celebrate that win because you tell your brain this is something good, and I am enjoying mm. that I'm doing this. I'll go, yes, I think we should keep doing this. And it's almost like a little healthy reward for doing something good too, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know what I've noticed? When I'm not feeling very good or like a little bit angry at something or tired or stressed, I won't make my bed. But when I'm really healthy, I'll make my bed. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. So the moods influence the way we act on a day-to-day -day basis. When we're not feeling great, what kind of foods mm. do we generally eat, right? Right. Nutrition. So what would be the biggest tip you can offer somebody to work on self-efficacy? Is it celebrating these small wins to do with these small bits of productivity that you can inject in your day? Yeah. Uh, figure out the easiest thing you can do easiest in your day, the earlier the better, to build confidence in your ability to achieve something mm. and celebrate it. Whether it's waking up in the morning on time, mm. getting to work on time, 
getting to the gym mm. in time no matter what you do in the gym or maybe doing the work if you are used to getting to the gym doing the workout mm. that you need to do um putting, yeah. putting the effort in doing the what you need to do sorry oh doing the kori tenana oh, that you need yeah. to do seven dollars work on that who order oh got to work on that, who order. <laughs> that one got me um <coughs> and the other thing that will really help is having a bit of um gratitude mm. So anyone that follows me on social media knows that I am I'm a big believer in gratitude, uh, and gratitude. I think so too. Yeah, right. Um, and gratitude uh, can be blown out of proportion sometimes. Thinking you know you have to be grateful for um, the biggest things or the cheap the cheesy things. Mm. But gratitude, like I said before, your brain does what it's what's easiest for it to do. Right. Mm. So when we can build gratitude around our environment, our immediate environment. Mm. Um, we can appreciate those little things yeah. even when we're not feeling the best and when we learn to yeah. appreciate them it can help build perspective mm. when we have that perspective we can think a bit more logically instead of emotionally when we're not feeling mm. the best and that or can, a good balance of everything yeah right? exactly a good balance mm. and that can help us you know not let our emotions dictate our actions yeah. i think that's really important gratitude and and actually living and breathing those wins yeah because i think a lot of people um in ac across environments so across communities find it hard to take compliments even as well you yeah. know i know when i get Just told a compliment I'm like oh yeah whatever i yeah. don't even i don't acknowledge it mm. i don't recognize it i don't celebrate it and i think i know now i should celebrate some of them you know the genuine ones anyway mm. because those are small wins that i can take to work on my self-efficacy because you know, self-esteem is a major issue yeah everyone's yeah. got self-esteem Every, everyone goes yeah everyone, everyone has does, right why it doesn't because she's super confident in her <laughs> in herself in herself yes in herself every aspect but um, you can see it in wise body language as well she's got great posture mm. she holds herself very well you can tell she's confident absolutely right? and that's massive that would be my quick tip in influencing mood and and I suppose per perception of self as well, right? If you can control your body language, it's part of expression of self, mm -hmm. right? So all the stuff that we're talking about, it's expression of self. And if you can control your body language, how does that link to your mood and your mental health? Do you think? So a a quick study well, i'll talk about this study by amy cuddy uh, she's a psychologist she did a ted talk about this so you can go mm. look that up nice um she said uh, they had two groups of people one having slumped down posture mm. a posture that affects you negatively and open posture right exactly uh, and they looked at the the hormone levels they mm. tested stress so the cortisol levels mm. and uh testosterone and uh, endorphins mm. right also the dopamine and if the person that will slum down like this for just two minutes, their cortisol levels rose up like no tomorrow. In and just two minutes. In just two minutes, and the testosterone went whoosh, right down. So just by slumping in this posture, yeah. If everyone listening on radio, I'm crunching like Smeagol. For just two minutes, for my two minutes, stress levels are going to yeah, go up. Grabbing your neck or, or having any uh, postures that you know associate mm. with just being down. Yeah. Um, two minutes. Mm. Yeah, cortisol levels went up, testosterone went down, um, growth hormone went down, and the opposite. So when someone was opened up for mm. just two minutes, their cortisol levels were so low, it was an, it was it was incredible. Mm. And the testosterone and growth hormone levels, of the, the hormones to help you feel a little bit better, mm. were up through the roof. That's super interesting. And imagine all the people that are in those postures, are uh, you know every day for mm. hours and hours and hours and, and the more stress they get the more down they get exactly and the more the posture is going to crumble the cycle another loop another loop loops on loops on loops mm. patterns and patterns and patterns yeah. that's why exercise is so important in terms mm. of you know improving your posture uh your ability to stand up straight and embrace yourself mm. in a movement you know, if you can't ex embrace yourself through exercise through movement through your posture mm. uh it's gonna have a negative effect yes I think we'll leave it at that, but there's some really, really good tips in there in understanding your emotions, your brain, your thoughts, some, a four-step guide. Break the loop, recognize the trigger, mm -hmm. manage the trigger without judgment. What was the fourth step again? Fourth loop is, and just keep moving forward regardless. Keep moving forward. I really like what you said about um, self-efficacy and celebrating small wins. Yeah, it's, it's a massive Some thing. gratitude, you know.
And it's, it, it's little things that anyone can do mm. any day, any time. Little things people can do every day, all day. All day, yeah. As long as we're aware of them. All right. I think we'll leave it at that for today. Awesome. Thanks everyone for tuning in to the only podcast. Today we had Harris Butt on the show. Really good tips. Um, he's doing a workshop this Saturday at 10 a.m. at the New Zealand Institute of Health and Fitness. That's at Dixon Street. 90, what was the address again? 94 Dixon Street. 94 Dixon Street. Level 1. Level 1. You can find him on Instagram at Harris Butt Fitness Coach. Oh, close. Harris, Harris Fitness Coach. Harris Fitness Coach. Yeah. Harris if with one R. You can't find him. We're going to post up this video anyway. You can find all the links on there. Boom. That's Thanks us. for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Back to you, Y. <laughs> okay, Father, we have the news coming up.